Hey guys, it's Bray here at Blossman Branch Farm and I have been getting so many questions as we are rolling into spring here on various topics. And I also have so many things I wanna talk about. And today's is something that I am very passionate about. So we're gonna get into that in a second. But what I wanted to say is because it is so incredibly busy at the farm, typically with seed starting and this time of year, and we are doing landscaping planning for our new cottage gardens and landscaping. And what I'm trying to say is that I don't have time to make super fancy flashy videos. You guys know I film, I edit, I farm, I homeschool, uh, and I run my household. So I don't have a crew. I don't have editing people. It's just me. So if you're here looking for fancy popping and uh, fancy editing tricks, this is not your channel. I am just going to talk to you very straightforwardly about gardening and some issues in gardening that I think are important to be thinking about here as we head into spring. So like I mentioned, today's topic is very near and dear to my heart. And today's topic is plastic use in gardening and in agriculture. Now, if you've watched our video about why we got rid of landscape fabric here at the farm, you already know that I have a lot of concerns about contamination of soil, especially with things like microplastics and other chemicals that can leach from plastics into our soil. So while the use of landscape fabric is still very, very common in market farming and gardening, we have chosen to eliminate it. You can go back and watch that video for more details, but our main concerns are that it's not recyclable at all. It usually ends up in landfill and also it leaches tiny particles of microplastics into the soil. And over time that can greatly affect the microbial life within the soil. But that aside, the other place that you know that we have gotten rid of plastic use is in our seed starting. So this is why we soil block. We talk about soil Ones blocking a lot here on this channel. And this was where our plastic free journey like started here at the farm. I learned about soil blocking from Elliot Coleman. I decided I really wanted to give it a try. So I tried it, I, I loved it. And I realized that it required so much less plastic. I wasn't going through disposable seed trays that would break every season and my plants were much healthier. If you want to learn more about soil blocking, we have about eight bajillion videos about it on the channel. So just scroll back. But as I was going through all these experiments and posting about it and talking about it, especially on our Instagram, we got lots of comments about, well, why don't you try these trays? Because these trays are stronger. So uh, these trays were given to me to try as an alternative because they are plastic. Um, but the claim is that they last much longer than the disposable seed trays that are very typical for use in gardening. So they're very hard. Uh, they're absolutely, definitely sturdier than most seed trays. They have this little thing on the bottom where you can pop it up. Now, I actually had mixed reviews on this. I didn't actually love this because what I found was down here at the bottom, it was hard to get the soil packed in enough. So the soil ended up being pretty loose down here and they dried out really quickly. So they have these slits on the side uh, that are supposed to help with air pruning. They don't do as good of a job as soil blocking at air pruning, but they do help. Um, however, I found that they dried out really fast. And what I don't like about these is that I can't see when they dry out. So that's why I like soil blocks because it's very easy to look at the side of a soil block because the soil is exposed and know, okay, this is dry, I need to water it. With these guys, it's really hard to tell because they're encased in plastic. So I can't see what's happening. So that was one reason that I didn't like them. But the other reason as I started delving into what these are made up of is the issue with recycled plastics in gardening. People are finally coming around to how damaging and how bad plastic is for our environment, how bad it is long-term, how bad it is for aquatic life, how bad it is for people, and how we're finding that it's accumulating inside human beings, in our bloodstreams, in our systems. It's just scary to me. Um, and so people are finally coming around to this and they're deciding, I don't wanna use plastic anymore or I wanna use plastics that are not single use. So this definitely fits that bill where it's not single use, however, or recycled, but. This is not an advertisement for these, okay? Because we're gonna dive into uh, a few nuances with recycled plastic. So lots of companies are doing this now where they're saying, hey, this is recycled plastic. So this is not as bad as using just plastic. These are recycled. Greenwash, greenwash, greenwash. Okay, recycled plastic, let's talk about. Is recycled plastic, especially in the garden situation, better than virgin plastic? Is this any better for the environment? Now, from the standpoint of that these are reusable, they are better. However, I am getting rid of all of mine. Um, I'm not using them anymore at all. Now, this might seem weird for someone who 
talks about regenerative and sustainable and all this, you would think that I would be in favor of recycling. However, there are lots of studies that are coming out now about how bad the recycling process of plastic is and how damaging it is for the environment and how much chemicals end up leaching like stabilizers and those kinds of things. So let's get into the research. So first of all, we should say that plastic has really no place in a cyclical sustainable economy. It's just not something that's ever going to be part of a sustainable option. If we're talking about something like glass, something like aluminum, those things are much more easily recyclable. They are better for what's called a cyclical economy, but it's just not possible with plastic. Let's talk about the recycling process of plastic. First of all, most plastics are not recycled, but I think it's somewhere around 6% of plastics are recycled. But what happens when those plastics are recycled is they grind them down. So they get ground, 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 down. they all get mixed together. They have stabilizers and some other things added, and then they get reformed into their new life, whatever it is, seed tray. During that process, a couple things happen. One is that grinding process creates a ton of microplastics. So while recycling has been kind of put out as the solution to the issue of what do we do with all these plastics, it actually creates a larger problem in that it creates these microplastics that are released into the water supply and are virtually impossible to filter. And in fact, they sampled some water from a state-of-the-art plastic recycling center in the UK and they found that actually 13% of the plastic that they were processing to turn into recycled plastic products were actually released into the water supply as microplastics. So it's not a small issue. These microplastics have been found everywhere from breast milk to snow falling in Antarctica. It's everywhere. It's very toxic for aquatic life. It's creating lots and lots of unintended consequences. So whenever we're looking at something that creates microplastics, such as plastic recycling or wearing polyester clothing, those things all contribute to microplastics in our water supply. So it's something that we need to be mindful of. The other thing that happens during the recycling process is that they add stabilizers. What they're finding is that these stabilizers that they're adding during the recycling process tend to leach into whatever is being contained within the plastics. So we're going to get into leaching here in a second, but let's look at some of the chemicals that have been found in recycled plastics because the amount of chemicals, particularly toxic ones that are found in recycled plastic are much higher than in virgin plastic. So a 2015 study in Germany found that recycled plastics contained a lot of toxic flame retardants including some banned materials like POP that have a lot of health impacts, particularly on children. Another study in the EU in 2017 in children's toys that were made with recycled plastic found that there was a level of toxic flame retardant that was nine times higher than the regulated limit for safety for that chemical. A 2018 study of seven different countries on four different continents found that recycled plastic products had high levels of dioxins in them. A 2021 study found endocrine disrupting chemicals in recycled plastics, including carcinogenic ones, those that are linked to endocrine cancers, neurotoxic chemicals. And a 2022 study found that bottles that were made with recycled plastic, water bottles that were made with recycled plastic contained higher concentrations of toxic chemicals than plastic water bottles that were made with virgin plastic. There's more studies, I'll post them in the description of the video, but the point here is that this happens because recycled plastics are made up of lots of different types of plastics. And some of those plastics have contained things like pesticides, they've contained some of these toxic chemicals. So it's very difficult to sort these plastics and to know exactly what is going into them, but also it has to do with the plasticizers and the stabilizers that are getting added as they're processing in addition to the microplastics that are produced when they're creating these recycled plastic products. So all of this aside, clearly we're getting the picture that recycling plastic is not the rosy recycling situation that we would like for it to be. So recycling can make us feel better, right, about using plastic. Like, hey, I put this in the recycle bin, it makes it feel like it goes away a little bit. But looking at the research, looking at the studies, looking at what is happening actually in the recycling process with plastics, we know that that is just not the case. And the best case scenario is just to avoid plastic whenever possible. Well, all of this is super concerning to me from an environmental standpoint, there is a standpoint of how this impacts us as gardeners individually. So of course, we're always looking at the umbrella of how does this affect my planet? How does this play into my ecosystem? These are all things we should be considering. And if you're here on this channel, you probably already do. But the other piece of it is, okay, well, individually, how is this going to affect my plants? If I grow in a recycled plastic container that I know contains a fair amount of dioxins, other toxic chemicals, possibly flame retardants, does that affect the seeds themselves? 
Now I mentioned that I didn't love these because I couldn't tell when they were dry or when they were not. It's an issue that I have with seed trays in general. But my bigger concern with the recycled plastic piece of this is the fact that we know that plastics leach. And leaching is just where some of those chemicals that are contained within the plastic, they happen to not be very stable. Plastic is very unstable and a lot of these chemicals have been shown to leach. So you might've heard about this with plastic water bottles. You don't wanna leave a plastic water bottle full of water in your car where it gets hot because those chemicals will leach into whatever is being contained within the plastic. And this especially becomes concerning with recycled plastic. Now, of course, part of this is because like we mentioned, recycled plastic in particular contains worse chemicals than virgin plastic does. But the other piece of it is, so those plasticizers, those dioxins, those flame retardants, those are the kinds of things that I intentionally really try to avoid in my garden. So I absolutely don't wanna put them in my seed starting soil, but can it actually affect the soil? Well, when we look at how plastic leaches, so the way in which plastic typically leaches is under a couple conditions. One is moisture and the other is heat or temperature. So if you started seeds before, you know that what you have here within these containers are moist soil and we typically have them either sitting in the sun or sitting pretty close to some lights and those lights are warm. So we have a recipe here for leaching these chemicals into the soil that is within these seed starting trays. We have hot lights, we have moist soil, we have a container that contains lots of toxic chemicals. This is a recipe to me for things leaching into our soil that we don't want in there. And the truth is that we, we know that particularly microplastics, but a lot of these chemicals also impact both the soil life, which isn't such an issue when we're just growing in a tray, but once we put that soil into the ground, um, and it also can contaminate surrounding soil. So for me, it is not worth the risk. I am not someone who has a lot of conspiracy theories. I don't think that the companies who are making recycled plastic seed trays are doing it with any negative intentions. But I think that as we are learning more about the recycled plastics process, we just need to start saying, hey, I don't wanna use plastic in my garden anymore. And we need to start demanding alternatives. There are already some good alternatives out there. There are some metal containers. If you like the more traditional starting seeds within a tray, there's obviously soil blocks that we start on the fiberglass trays so we don't have the leaching issues. If fiberglass trays are too expensive for you, we are gonna actually be making some trays out of wood. We're gonna be making low trays with a low side and we're gonna be putting a nice wood bottom on them putting soil in there, and then just starting our seeds directly in there. You don't have to do it expensively. You don't have to spend a ton of money to do this. Now, I just like the fiberglass trays because they're easy to stack, and when I have about 200 of them, I need them to stack nicely and to stack away and to store away. But the wood ones are a great option too. You can just start your seeds in a wood tray. Okay, you don't have to go out and get something fancy or be greenwashed into thinking that recycled plastic is better. Now, again, if your goal is to just have something that you can reuse year over year and you're not concerned about the leaching and you're not concerned about the microplastics created in making these, then by all means, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. I just wanted to give you the information so that you can make an informed decision as always. All right, guys, I think that's it. I have ranted on for long enough today. I'm going to be back at you with another rant coming up here soon. And tonight I'm gonna get my seed starting station all set up so that I can start seeds here in the basement at my in-laws house as we are waiting on our house project to come along. We are hopefully jumping into framing next week. So I will be giving you guys an update walkthrough as soon as we get everything framed. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Thanks for popping in and for watching this video. If you liked it, if you learned something, if there's something you wanna add, as always, please put it down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you guys around here soon.